This is the final video for lesson 3-3 uh, three, three on creating simulations. I know this is getting repetitive, so I'm going to do it fast, but make sure in your exercises, each of them in your assignment, that you follow the four-step process. Tell me what your random number generator statement is. Randy, write the Randy statement. Declare what each number represents. Generate the necessary data and then make your interpretation of the data and answer the questions. The purpose of this video is to set up the very first simulation that you do in your assignment, which I call the birthday problem. It's a very famous problem in the world of statistics, and I'd like you to think about it also and create a simulation to try to arrive at an answer to the probability. The birthday problem uh, is this answer to this question. There's 30 people in the classroom. Let's pretend we're sitting in our classroom right now and there's 30 of us. The question is how likely is it that some of us have common birthdays, birthdays on the same day of the year? How likely is it that your birthday is the same birthday as somebody else in the classroom? Or in fact, anybody has the same birthday as anybody else. How probable is that? I can tell you that in the, our typical setting, our non-distance learning setting, when I'm in a classroom of students, what I usually do is after asking this question, I tell everybody to write, the, just make a guess. What person, how likely is it? What's, what's the probability? And I ask people to put their answer in percent form. And then I go around, I make them write it down. And then I go around the room and look at the guesses. So what's, what's their best guesstimate? So I put that here on this screen that normally that's what I do. And I have people write their guesses. And I can tell you uh, with great confidence, it's consistent trimester after trimester and year after year that probably 90% of people say that the likelihood that there's going to be a common birthday between people is somewhere between one or actually, can I modify that? Somewhere between zero and 5%. Almost 90% of people say that. And then there's a few people that maybe guess as great as 10%, but very seldom does anybody say there's more than a 10% chance that somebody would have the same birthday as somebody else. So, what I want you to do is, I w I'm, by the way, I'm guessing that your estimates would be consistent with that then. So how do we arrive at an answer to the question without knowing how to calculate an answer for that question? Well, I'm assuming you're anticipating here. We create a simulation. So that's what you do in the first exercise in your assignment. If you open up the exercise document that's attached to Lesson 3.3, you are going to see that on the first page of that assignment, there are two grids that look like this. There's 30 cells in each grid. And there's 30 cells because there's 30 students in the classroom, right? So we are collectively, each of us, we're gonna walk into two different classrooms and ask everybody, hey, when's your birthday? Hey, when's your birthday? When's your birthday? And we're gonna record when those birthdays are and then see if anybody has the same birthday as anybody else. So how do you simulate asking somebody when their birthday is and then being able to record it. What we normally have done in class and to save time, I think I'm just going to tell you here, what we've normally done if we've said, 
out with, after a lot of experimenting and discussion, we usually end up doing this. We generate random numbers from 1 to 365. Sorry for my marker here. 1 to 365. Because there's 365 days in the year, right? Actually, there's 366 this year because it's a leap year. But let's stick with 365. So what I want you to do in that first exercise in the assignment is exactly what I'm showing here. Set your calculator on random integers from 1 to 365 and hit equals and write your number down and then hit equals again and write your number down and fill in the whole grid with 30 numbers. Now again, each of those numbers, this, this number 211 is saying that person was born on the 211th day of the year. That's probably down in August or September. And this person was born on the 34th day of the year. I think that would be February 3rd. So um, you don't have to interpret what month it is, but write down your 30 numbers. Fill in the whole, fill in this whole grid with numbers from, come on, with numbers from 1 to 365. Now, ask yourself the important question, however, do we allow for repeated numbers? Well, in this case, we would, right? Because what, what would it mean if I had another number down here, another 34? What would that mean? Those two dudes have the same birthday, right? And what would it mean if I had another 34, well, that'd be three people in the same room with the same birthday. Do you think that would ever happen? Well, I want you to do the experiment. And then you're going to do this twice. You're going you're gonna to generate the 30 birthdays and check and see. Look very carefully. Take a couple minutes to analyze that and see if anybody has the same birthday as anybody else. And then you're going to repeat that process a second time for another classroom of 30 students and see if they have common birthdays. And then what I'd like to do when we meet together during our class time online in distance learning, we're going to go around and report our results to everybody else. So we need, I need everybody to do that experiment twice, two different classrooms, and see if there's common birthdays or not. I'll bet if we pool our data together, we can arrive at a pretty good answer to the question where you saw Kevin Hart over here. How likely do you think it is that there's common birthdays? I bet if we put our data together, we'll get a pretty good answer. Um, we can skip that screen right there. Okay, so after watching these three videos now, I think you're ready for your assignment. So if you click open the assigned uh, worksheet there, you'll see the very first problem is the birthday problem. And then there's about five or six, I can't remember for sure, about five or six other simulation problems. And what you're going to do on each of those simulation exercises is follow these four steps again. So maybe you want to stop the video and copy these down if you haven't already. But follow those four steps on each of the other exercises. And then we'll discuss it in class. So this is going to end the video three, and I think at this point you should be ready to start your assignment. Good luck.